Damon Martin MMA fighting here with one of the top coaches in the world from American Top Team, one of my favorite people to chat with before and after a lot of fights in the sport, Mike Brown. Mike, uh, welcome back. How are you? I'm great, man. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for taking the time. Obviously, you are one of the busiest guys in the sport. Do you ever actually see your own bed? Like, do you actually see your own house occasionally? Yeah, I've been seeing it a lot more now during COVID. I had a nice break. <laughs> Actually, you know, got me, got me used to being home, but, uh, no, I enjoy, I enjoy the road. The road is fun. Yeah, absolutely. I know these next couple of weeks in particular are going to be very crazy with you. Obviously Kayla Harrison's got a five. Of course, Dustin Poirier has a big fight coming up. Uh, how do you balance that when you're in the gym? Because obviously you're working with, obviously you work with the Amoslav who just obviously won Bellator title. I mean, so you're, you got a lot of, you know, a lot of balls in the air, so to speak. How do you balance your time when you got so many, top athletes with fights coming up. I just do my best. You know, I, I give as much as I can to each athlete, try to uh, put as much as I can. I, I, I didn't actually go to the Yaroslav fight. I helped him in camp, but I, di I didn't go to that, that fight. Uh, but that was a great win. Very impressive. This guy is a um, phenom. He's a, he's a handful. This guy is very, very difficult guy to beat. I, I I don't see him losing for a long, long time. Yeah. I mean, no one does that to Douglas Lima. I mean, we gotta be honest. Like, who does that to Douglas Lima? You know what I mean? His conditioning is superb. His, his wrestling is superb. His, his, uh, the way he's, he sets things up is beautiful. Uh, I learned a lot from the guy actually like watching him, helping him. Uh, I, I pick up techniques from this guy. I mean, that's the, the beautiful thing about American top team. You got different athletes from all over the world with, with different ideas and different techniques. And, uh, we're, we're all sharing information. Absolutely. And I know, uh, one of my favorite people actually last time I was down at ATT was, uh, you want young J check is back in the gym. Now. Uh, I know you guys always love having her around. I know she was telling me how excited she was to be back home at ATT with you and, Cattell and all the other coaches down there. So I'm sure you're happy to have Joanna home again. Yeah. Another monster, you know, she's, you know, one of the best that ever did it in our sport. So it's, it's an honor to work with her and I'm excited to see her back in action. Hopefully they, they iron some things out and they get her back in there with an exciting fight. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Mike, let me talk about the biggest subject at hand right now in terms of what's coming up next. And that is of course, Dustin Poirier's uh, trilogy with Conor McGregor. We talked after the rematch with Conor, everything that went right. It was an incredible performance from Dustin. Everything worked well. The calf kicks paid off, obviously getting the knockout. You couldn't have written a better script for that. I'm curious going literally back to back fights. Cause it is kind of rare to do that in our sport. We don't typically see, back-to-back -back rematches you might get a rematch but typically you don't go back-to-back -back fights like that um without giving away secrets of course like when you're going back in the gym like how much are you tweaking and changing are you are, in terms of like because it is a, a kind of an odd scenario where you're literally getting ready for the same guy twice in a row i mean it happens it happens quite a bit especially for title title fights you see guys lose the belt and they rematch right away we do see it and you know he's you know, we're, we're working on our stuff. We're working on what we got to work on. Don't want to give too much away, but strong game plan and re ready to DP will do his thing. He imposes will on, on McGregor. This is what he does. This is what he does very well. And this is what he does better than anybody. Yeah. Were you, were you ultimately happy with the choice to, to do the Connor trilogy right away, as opposed to, uh, cause I know there was talk of Dustin, you know, maybe fighting for the vacant title once, you know, Habib officially retired and listen, I, I actually agreed with his choice. Not that my opinion matters, but like I said, listen, you know, the Connor fights massive. Uh, he's taking care of a family, you know, that's going to get him a huge payday. It's a huge fight and it kind of settles a rivalry in a way, you know, kind of puts it to bed once and for all, uh, the title will still be there. And I think, and, and I, I imagine you'd probably agree with me in saying that, no offense whatsoever to Charles Oliveira. He's a monster, but I think everyone in the world probably considers Dustin the, the, you know, the best lightweight right now anyways. Yeah. He was, he was the number one guy. A lot of people think me included think that, that Connor Dustin fight should have been for the belt. Uh, there's, uh, 
yeah, he, he, he's the guy that should, should be fighting for the title. Maybe he should already be champ, but it is what it is. I think it, it came down to money. And I think it, I don't know exactly the details of what their deal is, but I know he, he'll make more money in the Connor fight. So I think that's why he chose the, the fight. They gave him the option. I think they gave him the option to fight for the belt or to fight Connor. And I think it came down to money. Yeah, I mean, that's once in a lifetime kind of money. We can't ignore that. You know what I mean? And who knows? I mean, we know how this sport goes. If you pass up on it, who knows if it'll ever come back around again? You know what I mean? Like, you can't pass up on that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a wild game that we play, and you you never know what's next. You never you never know who, who's going to be in front of you, how, what the landscape will be. It, it's always changing and changing dramatically. Yeah. I'm curious, Mike, we talk a lot about, you know, I always try to avoid too much in terms of game plan, but in terms of your own preparation as coach, how much video are you watching on the fighters, uh, your fighters are facing? Like, are you a video study guy? Like, do you go in and kind of study the, your, the opponents that way? Yeah, I'm a big video guy. I mean, we did a lot of uh, studying for the first fight. You know, so we, now we, we know, you know, what his tendencies are. We put a lot of work into that. Uh, I mean, we, we did a, we did some for this fight, of course, as well. But the majority of it was done the last camp. You know, we, of course, we studied their 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 fight that just happened, and uh, that's yeah, that that's I guess that answers the question. Yeah. Now, obviously, Dustin and Nate Diaz are are different fighters. They're not the same guys. But we saw from Connor in the first Nate Diaz fight, you know, the adjustments he made going into the rematch. And credit to him, I thought he did a great job of getting physically conditioned the right way, you know, making sure he didn't, you know, completely blow his wad in those first couple of rounds. Although again, you know, obviously Diaz had his moments in that fight as well, but he did make those adjustments. Now, again, Dustin's a different animal, but in your preparation, like, are you looking at it that way thinking, you know, Connor's going to make some adjustments, whether it's preparing for the calf kicks, whether it's, you know, doing whatever he needs to do. Like, do you feel like the, are those kind of like the variables that you always get ready for knowing that he's going to try to come in and, and counter what you did the last time? Of course, you'd be it, you'd be silly not to think that. Uh, yeah, he he I, is that his only rematch. Yeah, he. I mean, he obviously did better in the, in this his one and only rematch that he had. Uh, I think Dustin has also done very well in in his, all his rematch fights. You know, he fought uh, Eddie Alvarez twice. He, he fought uh, Max Holloway twice. Um, and he seems to do better also in his in his rematches. He's always made good adjustments, and he's a student and always improving and getting better and evolving. And, uh, and I expect to see a better Dustin in this fight than we saw in the first. Yeah, it's funny because Dustin at lightweight has become such a just such an animal in the way he attacks his opponents and the way he's his body holds up. I mean, again, I'm not going to bring up the featherweight thing because I've talked to him about that many times, how you know much that you know kind of took away from his body and and now how much better he feels a lightweight. But do you feel like this is really a completely and absolutely nothing against Connor? I know you have a lot of respect for Connor, but do you feel like this is this is a much tougher matchup for Connor right now because the way that Dustin has fought at lightweight, he's got more power, he's got a better chin, he's got more power. Uh, more durability and, and just the way he, he goes after guys with a certain kind of ferocity, like it's really hard to match him. It's a tough match for anybody in the world. I mean, he's <laughs> a monster. I mean, nobody has this can put out the same amount of horsepower or wattage in the 15 minutes or 25 minutes, whatever the fight might be. Nobody puts out more power, more wattage than this guy. Talking about power and volume combined, it's it's. Uh, I don't think anybody comes close to him. It's it's not normal. And the guy is is a gifted guy, and uh, he's he's coming. He's punching hard. Uh, he's kicking hard for a long time. It it doesn't stop. Doesn't go away. He doesn't fade. And uh, he's a very powerful guy with with natural born. Uh, power punching and kicking and uh, also gifted with crazy conditioning. So good luck. It's, it's not, he's not <laughs> slow. He's not slowing down uh, again, not getting into game plan, but one big element of the first fight, uh, which has become kind of a, a big thing in MMA in these last few years. I mean, the leg kick is nothing new. I mean, obviously as a fighter, you are very familiar with the leg kick, but the calf kick in particular has become a real weapon 
in recent years, we've seen a lot of guys start to employ that. And that did play a big factor in the first fight. Now, uh, I don't know if six months, maybe six months is enough time to where he can suddenly learn how to defend the, the, the calf kick and it's better. But I'm kind of curious as a coach, just in general, the the the, the um, inclusion of the calf kick as such a major weapon. Uh, what do you what do you think about that? Because it, it's not new, but it has become like a very, very potent weapon in these last few years. It's a it's a monster weapon. It's uh, yeah, much more efficient and a better way to damage your opponent than the quad kick. That's for sure. Uh, I don't remember what the year, year was, but I mean, it became really popular. I think it started at our gym or, or close to it around that area, you know, 10 years ago or, or whatever, so, some, something like that. Um, but it is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great weapon and Dustin uses it well, but it's not only, I mean, it's not always easy. Even when you know what a guy's going to do, sometimes it's about setting things up. And, and even if you know a guy's got a great double leg, good luck stopping it. If, it, if, it, if it's set up well, anything can be used at any time. Yeah, absolutely. And Connor's stance, and again, you know, you know, you expect him to make adjustments, things like that. But the way he kind of stands, that wide stance he uses a lot. Uh, puts that lead leg out there a lot, and that does kind of put him in harm's way of that calf kick because it is a quick it is a quicker reaction with the leg, with the going for the calf than going up high to the thigh. Uh, not that I'm like the expert in the world, you're the expert, but like it feels like that is a harder kick to defend, and especially with the way Connor stands. Like again, he's gonna it's it's more about like things he's gonna have to alter in his own game to avoid that, right? I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll be ready for it. Yeah. Now the last fight, again, I know you're not, uh, I'm not going to sit here and ask you to make a prediction like, you know, round and, and minute when the fight's going to end, but obviously you couldn't have asked for a much better result in the last fight. Second round got knockout first guy to ever, you know, truly knock out and finish Conor McGregor, you know, in, uh, in the UFC and, and considering what, and again, again, I know there's a lot of respect for Conor there, but do you see the the trilogy ending in similar fashion? Cause most guys can't go, three rounds with Dustin, much less five rounds and credit to, you know, a guy like maybe Dan Hooker who did, you know, find a way to survive five rounds. But do you see this fight going in somewhat of a similar fashion as the last one? In other words, what I guess I'm getting at is you don't expect it to be a war. You would expect Dustin to get another pretty dominant finish here. I mean, I expect him to win. Who knows? It's hard. I mean, this the fight game is crazy. It's so hard to predict. You know, I, I don't like to nail my nail things down to it. Uh, prediction. I mean, I, I expect Dustin to win. He's, he's done everything to prepare himself to put himself into position to win. Uh, he's ready. He's focused. And, you know, I believe he's going to get his hand raised, you know, at when will it be at what round at the end? I, I'm, I'm not certain, but uh, I'm confident in, in victory. Yeah. Dustin has been a guy that's been around American top team for a lot of years now. And obviously as a coach, you're helping him evolve and he's evolving every single day. But I feel like the Dustin we're seeing right now is so dangerous uh, and so good. Like, and again, I, I know obviously you're going to be biased as coach, but I truly believe we're seeing the best Dustin Pori right now. Like, cause we're seeing him develop. We're seeing him add in new tricks and new things. Like, it's amazing to see that because you do see some guys, some girls get caught in a pattern where they kind of become the same fighter fight to fight. I feel like we're still seeing Dustin evolve. Like this guy's kind of scary right now. No, I mean, his, his run is, is incredible. One of the most impressive runs we've ever seen. One of the longest routes uh, to a UFC title fight that he had when he fought the interim belt. Um, just the way he's done it. And, and in what fashion? I mean, this guy's every fight he's in is is amazing. Is exciting. Is fight of the night, fight of the week, fight of the year candidate. You know, they're they're all they're all wild. They're all crazy. This is one of the most e exciting uh, athletes in the sport. You know, in, in combat sports, right? He's uh he's coming at you and he's coming hard and it doesn't stop. You know. Um, you better be able to withstand some punishment because he's going to bring it. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I don't think anyone's going to argue with the notion that Dustin is the best lightweight in the sport right now. And again, I say that with absolutely no offense whatsoever to Charles Oliveira 
uh, or, you know, Patricia Pitbull and Bellator, anywhere else. But I, I truly believe it, and I'm sure you as his coach believe it too. He is the best lightweight in the sport right now. He, he's he's willing to dig deeper than, mo- than most men. He's, you know, when when he's – when his no, your nose is broken and your ear is bleeding, and uh, you know, are you are you gonna are you gonna back down? Or are you gonna waver? Are you gonna are you gonna crumble? Because he is not. He he is marching forward and and trying to take you out. You know, no matter what the circumstance, and and that's why uh, why he he finds himself on top. You know, most of the time. Yeah. Let me ask this, Mike. You mentioned the run that Dustin's on is so incredible right now. It really is. But another fighter you work with, of course, is the great Amanda Nunes. Uh, She's preparing for her title fight coming up later this year against Juliana Pena. And I was thinking about this before we talked tonight. I was thinking about like the greatest runs in you in in MMA, MMA history. You think about Fedor, you know, going on that undefeated run in pride, 28 fights or whatever it was. You think about Anderson Silva his middleweight title reign in the UFC where he also jumped up to light heavyweight and won a couple of fights. You think about Demetrius Johnson, 12, you know, 12 defenses in a row of his flyweight title. Um, and again, I'm not asking you to like, you know, degrade what those guys did, but when you think about the run that Amanda's on right now, cause I, I wrote about her fight fairly recently. I was like, man, her win streak is incredible. Like I didn't realize how long it had been. Like it really was crazy. Um, in your opinion, is this maybe the best, or at least at worst, one of the best runs we've ever seen, not just in UFC, but in mixed martial arts history? Because I think about that Fedor run. I think about that Anderson Silva run. And what Amanda's doing right now, I mean, doing what she did to Chris Cyborg, Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate. I mean, I don't know, man. It seems like it's it's it, that, that's right on par with any of those. It's, that stuff is really hard to compare. It sometimes doesn't make sense or it's silly to even try similar to like the pound for pound rankings is, is silly. I think sometimes like this, it's, there is no answer to it. They're, you know, you're, they're kind of, sometimes it's apples and oranges, but what, what's, what is super impressive to me is the amount of champions that she's beaten, you know, like former or present she's beaten every 135 pound champion that's ever been in the sport, every 145 pound champion it's ever been and all but one of the 125 pound champions i mean there's only been a couple but valentina is always you know is one pound for pound one of the best and and she did that twice uh the, her resume is uh impeccable and i mean by far the best woman's resume in the sport yeah. What's scary about Amanda too is, and, and I think we've seen, you know, when you, when you reach a certain level of success and uh, when you vanquish so many great competitors, you know, some people will fully admit, and I've, heard, I've talked to fighters about this, they get a little complacent, you know, they get, maybe not want to lose motivation, but like, you know, when you've beaten the best, of the best, now you're just fighting the next guy or the next girl. It's not as exciting. It's not as exhilarating, but Amanda, like you could argue Megan Anderson, you know, was, you know, she was on a one fight win streak or whatever it was. It wasn't like she was like this, you know, great conqueror that came in and Amanda went in there and just dismantled her. And obviously I think Juliana Pena is an incredible fighter in her own right, but like, I don't feel like motivation or, or, (laughs) or any of that is a problem for Amanda. Like she seems to attack every, every opponent with the same kind of ferocity. I just think she's getting better. I think she's still improving. She is, uh, she's gifted. She, she, I mean, she's, to me, she's not normal. She's not average. She's, she, she has like natural punching power. She's very agile, very athletic, uh, like kind of built for fighting long limbs, heavy hands, and, uh, started at a young age. It's just like this, uh, this recipe or a mix of ingredients that's really hard to beat like everything is kind of falling into place and everything was was done right and and, uh a mix of training at a young age genetics and training with good people and this you know all these things together make her pretty much unstoppable yeah it feels like amanda is going to be amanda as champion until she decides not to be like, I just have a hard time seeing it. And again, I know this is a crazy sport. You can never predict anything, but like, 
if there's a sure thing in MMA right now, I feel like Amanda's the closest thing we have to a sure thing. When you look at like, you know, picking fights or, or believing who's going to be a champion. Like if somebody said, who's going to be a champion a year from now, uh, bet all the money you got. I would say I'm probably going to bet on Amanda Nunes being champion this time next year, because I just don't see anyone, you know, beating her anytime soon outside of some wild, crazy, insane, wild thing. She's as about as much of a sure thing as we got in this sport right now. Yeah, I would think so. She's the thing is, I mean, I think she's beat all kind of one of those situations where she's kind of cleaned out the top of the division. So now she's fighting the the fighters that are that are ranked like lower than you know, she's beat the two, three, and four. Now she, you know, she's fighting people that are uh, ranked a little lower. And uh, I think that's why we're getting some of the, you know, like some of the quicker fights now. Yeah. Uh, before I get you out of here, Mike, I know one of your favorite uh, fighters to work with, Kyoji Oraguchi, is back in the gym working again. Always good to see him. But another guy I want to mention, I know you you talked about it on uh, on Instagram after it happened, and a guy that I actually just talked to on the phone last week that I just don't think gets the credit he's deserving right now is Adriana Marias for what he did to Demetrius Johnson, something no one has ever done. Uh, when you think about Demetrius's, you know, huge resume, um, Adriano is incredible, man. I, and I asked him, you know, I'm trying, you know, trying to be the reporter guy, trying to be like, you know, a little bit of the stir. I'm like, you know, do you consider yourself the best flyweight in the sport? And even he, you know, he wouldn't go out on that limb and say, you know, he was not the cocky guy to say I'm the best I'm this. He's like, you know, but I did beat Demetrius Johnson, but, Talk about an incredibly talented guy and, and seeing what he's done, man. That kid does not get the credit he deserves, in my opinion. Of course not. I mean, uh, super humble guy, just beat the, you know, known as the greatest flyweight of, of all time. Uh, a guy that is, uh, whose, whose resume is just incredible and stands with, up to any other resume that the sport's ever seen. Um, that was a very impressive win. I think one of the things that make it tough with with one FC, it's like people don't know where to 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 rank these guys because where it's do you rank them at one twenty five? Do you rank them at one thirty five? You know, is these because they're 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 fighting at a little bit of different weight. They're they're fighting at a weight up, but it's this the same day weigh ins or or the the no cutting weight. Uh, situation they have so it's kind of a weird maybe it's a weird weight issue is why people kind of don't know where to rank this, these guys but obviously this guy is you know one of the best fighters on the planet if not the best you know uh fly weight or bantam weight you know where, where do you rank him at but he's obviously proven that that he's capable of beating anybody uh in those weights near him yeah, I, it's funny. I actually asked Demetrius Johnson. I spoke to him a little bit ago, and I asked him about that. I said, you know, is, is the size there, has that played any part in, in, in any of the fights you had in one championship? And he completely shut that down and said, no. He's like, Adriano's biggest advantage, he's taller. And he's like, I fought taller guys my whole life, but the way he hit me with that uppercut and then threw that knee, you know, it was he had great length, great range. That had nothing to do with him being bigger. He was just, you know, the longer guy had great distance. And great range. He's like, no, it has nothing to do with it. And I, and I, I appreciate that because, like, he's not going to try to take away Adriano's yeah. win because, like I said, they're both fighting at the same weight. They're just not, you know, they're not killing themselves to get down to 125 the day before the fight. Yeah, Demetrius is a great champion, humble guy, and would never look for for an excuse. Uh, I mean, the sports, the sports evolving so much, and uh, it's it's tough. There, I mean, they're. The thing is, there's tough guys everywhere these days. There are tough guys in UFC, 1FC, uh, Bellator, PFL. I mean, there are monster fighters in Titan, Legacy, you know, all, all kinds of shows. You, there, there's talent nowadays. The talent runs deep, and there are good guys everywhere now. Absolutely. And I know it's funny to say that I know from talking to her before her fight, I brought up Kayla Harrison. I brought up like the whole pound for pound debate, you know, like where she, where she lies. There's a big debate, like why she wasn't getting ranked higher. And I'm sure you know this, but she couldn't care less. She's like, until I'm number one, none of that matters. She's like, I don't care if I'm number eight pound for pound or number six, none of that matters. And I was like, I love that attitude because 
at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Pound for pound rankings really don't matter. I mean, they're fun to talk about and it's a good debate. I get it, but really they don't matter at all. Fantasy. I mean, this is just all that is opinions of, you know, other people's opinions. So, and it can, it can never be settled or solved. So it almost doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, what matters is the world, the world title in your weight class, because there's a way we can settle it. There's a way we can find out who, you know, who is the, the greater athlete, who, who is the better fighter. And I think that's what we got to focus on. Yeah. You got, you got so many great fighters at American top team, Amanda, the women that train there, goodness gracious, you got some killers. Like I said, Kayla, Amanda, Joanna. I mean, man, that you got just a, a group of killers down there. And there's nothing like it, right? No, no, no other, uh, you know, the, I may say it all the time, but yeah, especially the females, it's the talent is, is really deep. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Mike, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're working this week, obviously, with the PFL card. So thank you so much for doing this. Obviously, have a good fight this week. Uh, safe travels out to me. Did I see that Dustin's already in Vegas? Is he already out there? Or or is that just something I, I missed? No, he's in he's in Florida right now. Okay, still in Florida. Okay. Okay. Well, obviously, yep. uh, safe travels out to the fight. Uh, obviously, crowd back. It's going to be fun to see the crowd for this one, right? Like with Dustin and Connor, yeah. you got to have a crowd. So it's cool. It's going to be a sold out crowd this time. Huge. Yeah, going to be huge. Absolutely. Well, Mike, thank you as always again. Obviously, have a good uh, fight this weekend. Good travel out to Vegas. And uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing from me directly after the fight with Dustin. All right, Damon. See ya.